I grew up deep in the country in a Victorian house with steep roofs at the top, which is where I stayed, old servants' quarters, I suppose they were, um, that seemed to carry some sort of melancholy that old Victorian houses always do. And there really was a tree that tapped and tapped its limbs and its twigs against the window. It's natural, therefore, I suppose, that to my mind at least, the great ghost stories and the ones that I wanted to include in my collection are mostly Victorian. So I'm going to take you through some of my absolute favorite ghost stories, I think amongst the greatest ever written. I'm not gonna let free the secret as to whether or not I truly believe in ghosts because the whole point of a good ghost story is that the heroes and the victims aren't always sure about what they've seen. Where's a good place to start, I wonder? I think I'll begin with that great American writer of short stories, Edgar Allan Poe. I think it's a good one to start with because it's not absolutely a classic country house woo story. And some of the other ones come close to that. It's a, a fable, I think you can say. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's okay to say that it's about someone who discovers they have a doppelganger, a double, someone who is so exactly like them that it begins to cause them deep unease and indeed anger. And as this person tells his story, you realize something very profound about this double. Books you read when you were a teenager, you can still see the cover in your mind. And, and I had a, a, a collected Edgar Allan Poe and um, I remember reading, there was one about oh, the telltale heart, about a beating heart, and there was the cask of Amontillado, which is about a cask of sherry. I loved the titles more than anything. And then there was William Wilson. The other ones I loved, they were quite gothic and strong in there, uh, but William Wilson just absolutely, I think because it started a, with a schoolboy who was about my age when I read it, and and I felt maybe this was, kind of painting a picture of the kind of life I might lead if I was not careful. If I had a double who, sh instead of being my conscience inside me, was actually out there and occasionally whispering in my ear. Um, so it, it, it haunted me. Haunt isn't just what ghosts do. Stories can haunt you too. Let's next look at an absolutely classic genre of ghost story, the haunted house. The story is called, appropriately enough, The Empty House. And this is by Algernon Blackwood, who was a, a very prolific writer of ghost stories in the Victorian era. And I remember my parents had a copy of his stories, and that's where I read this, amongst others, and it stayed with me a lot. It's a marvellous and classic tale of a, an old house that nobody dares live in, um, can't be rented out. And our hero, who's a rather ordinary young fellow has an aunt and his aunt has decided that she should go to this house and find out why no one will ever go in there. She lives in the village by the sea where this house is. So she gets a key from the estate agent and uh, gets her nephew to go along with her and they enter the house. So you as the reader, it is exactly as it should be. You're just with these two and you watch her put the key in the door of this old house where there's not a light shining and the door opens and you go in. It's that kind of a haunting where perhaps without giving too much away, the crime, the murder that took place in that house is being replayed by the two figures, the murderer and the murdered. And it's, whoa, it's very creepy and very good fun. One of the greatest writers in the English language of the 19th century was the Scots writer, Robert Louis Stevenson, best known, of course, for Treasure Island and Kidnapped and the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But he's written a story here which is set in the Edinburgh in which he himself grew up and which became famous for a terrible series of crimes, the Burke and Hare crimes, they're some, sometimes called, the resurrection men crimes. The infirmary, the, the hospital, the teaching hospital in Edinburgh 
was so successful and produced so many great doctors, amongst them, in fact, Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, and it needed, as all medical hospitals do, to have a supply of dead bodies, cadavers, to introduce the students in their anatomy lessons to the human body. These two criminals, Burke and Hare, they started by digging up fresh bodies when they found news of a fresh body that had died in a village somewhere out outside Edinburgh. They would go in the middle of the night and dig them up and take them and sell them around the back door to the unscrupulous, let's be honest, professors. Um, and then they found there weren't enough of those and the demand for cadavers was so enormous, or subjects as they called the bodies, they, they actually killed. They actually simply went round the streets of Edinburgh at night murdering people. Why are you laughing, Stephen? It's horrifying. And taking them to, to, the, to the infirmary. And that's where this story takes place. And it's beautifully told, of course, because he is one of the greatest writers, as I've said. And it's gruesome and wonderful. And I think you'll absolutely love it. This story is called Lost Hearts, and it's by the... I think undisputed master of the genre, M. R. James, Montague James. And this is a story about ghosts getting revenge. I remember reading it when I was a teenager, like so many of these stories, I was addicted to them. He finds an atmosphere and he plays on your mind with it. He allows you to know more than the characters in the story. So you have that urgent protective feeling you want to tell them to run away and not to stay. And it's about a, a boy who loses his parents and finds himself adopted, as it were, by an elderly cousin. It's quite creepy and it's delicious. And this is one of the best kind. It's the kind where the ghosts get their revenge. The ghosts are sort of innocent. And here's a wonderful story. It's The Judge's House by Bram Stoker, a name you may be familiar with because he wrote Dracula, uh, the great novel that sparked the craze for vampires. But he also wrote this ghost story, which is a classic, I think. It's a haunted house story. It's again, it's a young man who decides that uh, he needs isolation and when told that this house shouldn't be stayed in, it's dangerous, it's haunted. He's a very rational figure and he thinks he'd be able to explain any of the strange noises. Mm. So he goes to see the estate agent, gets the keys, the local ladies of the village help him sort of clear a space for himself in the old dining room where he can do his studying and then the noises begin. I think this story is the scariest of all the stories in my collection. I think you might agree there's something very malevolent and I think that's what frightens us. It's not just the bangs and the bumps, it's a sense of absolute evil and that's what there is in this house. It's probably the one I most reread because I remember the effect it had on me. Like a lot of these stories, like a lot of films as well, he allows the hero to be a little bit stupider than the reader. <laughs> In other words, you, the reader, think, oh no, I know what's going on now. Oh no, you really must leave. I, I understand what, that is that and that is that. And don't you see, He's, this is gonna happen to you if you stay, you idiot. And, and that's a, a wonderful feeling when you're reading a story because you're powerless. You can't speak to the character. You know, it's, even in the theater, you can at least go, he's behind you kind of thing. But in a book, it's too distant. And you know it's already happened because the pages in front of you yet to come will spell out what's already happened. And yet that human instinct to want to help or to want to, to, to stop the evil happening takes over. Um, it's a great experience reading this story and I hope it will be listening to it. Be frightfully scared and listen to my brand new audiobook, Ghost Stories, Stephen Fry's definitive collection, now. Only on Audible. Audible is not responsible if your hair falls out from fright. If you jump out of your skin, it will not push you back into it. Be warned.